So today and right now we're going to do boiling cabbage down in C with the Osborne roll as we've already done, but now we're gonna take it to a slightly different place on the neck rather than doing it down here or way up the neck, we're gonna do it kind of at a midpoint here at the fifth fret because if you take your index finger and bar across the fifth fret like this, that gives you a C chord. It's called, it's another inversion of C. Here's one inversion, here's another one, and then there's one up here, and then it repeats after that. But we're just talking about this fifth fret bar position, but rather than pressing down all four strings at the fifth fret with the index finger, we're just going to take two strings out of that position, the first and second strings, and we're going to use the middle finger on the fifth fret of the first string and the index on the fifth fret of the second. And so, as you remember, down here you have the C chord and then you play part of the F chord just by adding the pinky on the third fret of the first string. So we're gonna do the same idea here. And as you have a D chord, and this is, you don't have to know this right now, but there's a D position F chord right here with the index on the fifth fret of the third string and middle on the sixth fret of the second string and the pinky on the seventh fret of the first string. That's an F chord, but we're just going to take the first two strings out of that position and add them like that without letting go of the index and middle finger. This is a trick I uh, picked up from watching Earl Scruggs play. I'll explain about that a little bit more at the end of this lesson so as not to get off track here. So again, for the C chord, you're gonna have the index on the fifth fret of the second string, middle on the fifth fret of the first string, and do two of the Osborne rolls, and then add the pinky on the, without letting go of that C position here with the index and middle that we just played, add the pinky on the seventh fret of the first string, and the ring on the sixth fret of the, se of the second string. And then, Go, let go of that to go back to C, and you've got the C position right there, already sitting there. Two more Osborne rolls. Then take that position and move it down two frets. For the G chord, now that does not look like a G chord. And the two Osborne rolls down there, middle index, middle thumb, twice. And you've got the middle finger on the third fret of the first string and the index at the first, sorry, third fret of the second string. Now, a G seventh occurs when you have the middle finger, for instance, or whatever finger you're happening to use on the third fret of the first string. That gives, gives you a G seventh, but we're just adding one more note to it, which is the D, which is the open first string. And it doesn't, you don't need to really know this. I'm just kind of explaining for those of you who are interested uh, why I'm using this position. So again, it's the middle at the third fret of the first string, index at the fifth fret of the second string. So from the beginning, you've got down those two frets. Now you keep going and you're back, you just slide that back up two frets to the middle of the fifth fret of the first string where you started and index at the fifth fret of the second string in the left hand. And you're doing, again, two Osborne rolls, middle, index, middle, thumb in the right hand. Back to the F that we just did by adding the pinky on the seventh fret of the first string and the ring on the sixth fret of the second string. So it's that C and then the F. Now you're gonna do one Osborne roll at that fifth fret position. Move it down the two frets where we were before the G seventh and one Osborne roll there. And then go back to C. And I just slide the index down to the first fret of the second and then I have the ring on the second fret of the first string, the standard C chord. And do one Osborne roll there. And then hit the second string with the index finger in the right hand, and that'll be a quarter note. Quarter note, and pinch the outside string, says a quarter note, middle on the first, thumb on the fifth string, played together as a pinch. So the whole thing slowly together is, to the F, back to the C, down two frets for the G, or G seventh, back up to the C, the F, one on the C, one on the G, to the C chord, one second string pinch. Up the tempo.
okay, so there's boil them cabbage down in C. And I was going to explain where I came up with this position to do this. In the old days, I would have gone, and if it's easier for you, you can certainly do this. It's not a problem at all. You use the middle on the, or use the ring finger on the fifth fret of the first and the middle on the fifth fret of the second. And then just take that position and take those fingers and just move it up. So the ring is now on the seventh fret of the first string and middle on the sixth fret of the second string. I don't want to confuse matters. Just do it the way I told you. But if it's difficult for you for some reason, you can try this. So it's ring and middle on the first and second strings. And then same two fingers, ring and middle again on the seventh fret of the first and sixth fret of the second. Back to the fifth fret, down to the third, to the fifth, up to the seventh position. And then once at that point position. Now the reason, if you look at the, um, the difference in terms of economy of motion, how much your left hand is moving, if you're doing this, there's no motion. If you're doing it this way, see how much your arm is moving, your left hand? And you want to have as much economy of motion as possible where you're not moving that much. Um, Bela Fleck and I went to visit Earl Scruggs some years ago, uh, back, uh, I don't know, as I'm doing this in 2015, probably six or seven years ago. And he had a banjo in his hands, and he was playing a little bit of farewell blues, and he went like this. And I had always used the, this position like this with all this motion. I saw him doing this, which is the first position I showed you for Boil and Cabbage Down here. And it just floored me. Oh, it's such a better way to play that in terms of, you know, ease of right hand, of left hand, in terms of not moving around a lot. So, anywhere, that's where I got the idea to do that. So, um, don't worry about playing farewell blues right now. You've got a ways to go, but uh, it's something you can shoot for. And uh, so that's a little bit of Boil 'em Cabbage Down in C at the fifth fret. And I hope you enjoy that variation. <laughs> 